Okay, so uh, good morning to all of you. I think uh, now we can start the lecture. I see that there are around uh, 35, 36 participants. So should be enough to start off the lecture. Uh, and uh, you can ask your friends who are yet to uh, join the lecture that the lecture has started and that they can uh, join using the link which we have provided on LMS, right? On top of the LMS. So I hope uh, I am audible enough and that you can see me clearly. Uh, if there are any interruptions, uh, please let me know, right? Either just speak up or else just send a message. Uh, so before we start on with uh, today's part, let's see what uh, you have so far uh, learned about last week, right? Uh, so uh, not last week, actually on Tuesday, right? So uh, let me share the screen with you now. So on uh, Tuesday, I believe you have started your lesson with the uh, social and legal factors. So we are uh, now in chapter number four and we are talking about these macro environmental forces which uh, impact on businesses. And uh, we are talking about uh, how organizations, how businesses should be ready by uh, scanning all these macro environmental forces in order to uh, better counter react to the changes which happen in the macro environment. Right? So we have started discussing with the social and legal factors. Right. Uh, so we have started discussing uh, about uh, what sort of factors do govern the consumer adoption of e-commerce service, right? So when it comes to social and legal factors, one of the very important aspects in social and legal factors is uh, certain uh, factors which impact on the consumer adoption to adopt e-commerce services. Right? What sort of factors do affect the consumers when they try to adopt e-commerce services? Right? What is the impact uh, certain factors have on the consumers when they try to adopt e-commerce? Right? So first thing we talked about is cost of access. Right? Uh, so uh, due to certain cost barriers, right? certain group of people are having barriers to uh, have access to e-commerce services. Mainly we discussed about points such as uh, difficulties in owning a home computer maybe because of the high expenditure involved and so on, right? And uh, we also talked about value proposition, right? Uh, do customers really perceive a benefit uh, when, when they perceive uh, e-commerce? Do they see that... Uh, they can get a better benefit rather than buying uh, through usual media or offline media. What is the benefit that they have when they uh, try to adopt online methods or when they try to adopt e-commerce? Is there a better perceived benefit? Right? So value proposition plays another role. And also the ease of use. That means uh, the ease of connecting to the internet, right? The convenience in connecting to the internet, those uh, technological knowledge, that uh, people need in order to connect to the internet and also uh, using certain internet service providers, right? And uh, how to uh, use the web once you connect to the internet. So the ease of use also plays an important role when deciding the adoption of e-commerce services of consumers, right? Then we talk about security. Uh, so, uh, in reality, we know in the current context, there are so many news stories and so many uh, cases where uh, frauds have happened on online transactions, right? Fraudulent transactions on credit cards and so on, right? Stealing personal information, uh, which happen over online payment uh, platforms, right? So these kinds of uh, security related issues also impact or also affect on the consumer's intention to adopt e-commerce services, right? And also another thing we talked about is fear of the unknown. Generally, we all have a fear when we try to adopt something new, which is unfamiliar to us, 
product, right? So when consumers try to adapt to new uh, technological ways of shopping, buying products, right, searching for products, there is a general tendency for them to be afraid of these things because they are unfamiliar, unfamiliar to them, right? So therefore, fear of the unknown also plays a uh, uh, an important role when it comes to the adoption of e-commerce and also uh, certain negative things that they see and uh, hear about internet right sometimes negative things they have experienced so all these things put in together play an important role uh, when it comes to adopting e-commerce services by consumers right? then we moved on to talk about the privacy and trust in e-commerce which is also a very important aspect when it comes to uh, when we, we talk about e-commerce right so uh, we talk that uh, privacy is a key ethical issue uh, when it comes to uh, interacting in an online platform right uh, and also we said that uh, there are certain privacy legislations which uh, help to protect the privacy of the online consumers or the online uh, users in online platforms, right? There are certain privacy legislations which are established to protect our identities, right? And to protect our preferences, protect the information which we provide to organizations, right? So these leg legislations are there to protect our data from being sometimes uh, misused by organizations, right? Uh, identity theft, right? Misusing our identity by someone else without our authority, right? So all these kinds of things we have talked about on Tuesday, uh, which we have highlighted as having a major concern when it comes to e-commerce, right? Then uh, we also talked about why personal data is valuable for e-businesses. Why? Mainly because uh, by using these types of uh, data about consumers right uh, organizations can uh, better plan their marketing campaigns they can get a better idea about the consumption patterns about demographical features of their uh, market right and other things so companies can easily profile these consumers and use this information for their marketing campaigns Right? So they can send personalized emails, personalized messages, right? targeted communications, personalized promotion campaigns, special offers, all these things they are able to do well if they have good set of information about their consumers. Right? Uh, so al although it, it is such, we also highlighted the fact that uh, consumers Although they expose a certain amount of information to businesses, businesses have a responsibility to be ethical in using this uh, consumer information and to abide by data protection and privacy laws when they use this consumer information, right? Um, so we also here have related certain uh, types of information which businesses usually gather regarding consumers, one thing is contact information, then we talked about profile information, platform usage information, then behavioral information, right? Uh, across uh, multiple sites as well as on a single site, right? So I'm not going to uh, elaborate in detail on each of these points. I'm just uh, refreshing your memory on the points which we have discussed on Tuesday. Uh, so I think on Tuesday, you have uh, stopped at this point, right? Anti-spam legislation, right? So in anti-spam legislation, what happens is, we said that these are laws uh, which have been um, enacted in different parts of the world to protect the individual privacy. With the intention of what? With the intention of reducing spam. How did we uh, expand the term spam? Sending persistent, annoying email. Right? Or we also call it unsolicited commercial email. Right? So there are certain legislations which have been enabled to stop or to rather prevent these types of spam or these uh, annoying emails being sent out to consumers, which violates their individual privacy. Right? Um, so we also highlighted that anti-spam laws do not mean that uh, email cannot be used as a marketing tool. 
right? Then otherwise there's no point, right? If the if email cannot be used as a marketing tool, then the businesses will be losing a very important communication method which they can use to communicate about their products and services to consumers. Right? Rather, what they focus on here is to encourage permission-based email marketing, not to completely discourage email marketing, but rather to ask for the consumer's permission before sending an email to them. Right? Uh, we mentioned that this is actually uh, enabled by giving the option, opt-in option to customers and also unsubscribing option to customers with uh, permission-based email marketing can be implemented by organizations. So all these things we have discussed on Tuesday. I hope uh, you don't have issues uh, on that part which we uh, refreshed on right now. If there are any questions, please feel free to send a message or to uh, speak up and let me know, right? So today, uh, I think we have to start from environmental and green issues related to internet usage. Right? Um, so uh, when it comes to environmental and green issues related to internet, this is a very important topic which is being uh, continuously talked about in the current context especially. Right? So uh, the first point says, the future state of our planet is a widely held social concern. As you all know, currently we are having so many concerns about the sustainability of the environment and sustainability of our planet, right? There are new concepts such as global warming coming up, right? With the glaciers melting down and the planet uh, temperature rising up. There's a widely held concern for the environment and the planet in the current context. So the future state of the planet is being uh, somewhat threatened due to these kinds of issues. Right? So what is the role of technology in this current scenario? Right? So we say that the future planet, future status of our planet is uh, a widely held social concern. So how does technology come into play? Right? The next point says, Technology is generally seen as detrimental. Detrimental means having a negative impact, right? Having a negative effect, right? So technology, we say that sometimes is having a negative impact to the environment, right? Why do we say that? Now, uh, you know, there are certain cases where we see uh, technological waste is being disposed without a proper, without adhering to the proper mechanisms, right? Uh, mobile phones and laptops and other technological equipments like this, there are special methods to dispose of, right? You may have also seen uh, sometimes in your neighborhood, there are certain services uh, which are established to collect e-waste, electronic waste, right? So uh, due to e-waste not being disposed correctly, we um, sometimes face issues where certain uh, Metals such as mercury get uh, mixed with the soil, get mixed with the natural environment and it can harm the uh, composition of the soil and it can harm the environment, right? So these kinds of uh, issues are there sometimes. And also we say that sometimes uh, uh, CFC, right? Uh, these gases which are emitted from uh, equipment such as refrigerators and all, right? They are sometimes causing a threat to the environment. Why? Because this gas is not uh, environmentally friendly, especially we say that uh, it can harm the ozone layer, right? The atmosphere of our planet. So likewise, there are certain uh, concerns. And also we say that when certain devices are kept on standby mode, uh, those uh, rays which are emitted when uh, electronic equipments are kept on standby mode can harm the environment. So likewise, there are certain uh, concerns as to saying that technology is a uh, detrimental to the environment, right? But also, if we look at the next part of the sentence, there are some arguments that e-commerce and digital communications can have environment benefits, right? So also, some people argue that 
technology is not completely detrimental. There are so many positive effects of technology to the environment as well. Or these digital communications and technology can have uh, benefits to the environment. Right? So next point says, companies some can sometimes also make cost savings while positioning themselves as environmentally concerned. So companies can also benefit from being environmentally friendly or uh, by following sometimes we say green e-commerce, right? By following green e-commerce, by following uh, environmental conservation practices, right? Businesses can also be benefited. So today we are going to see certain uh, facts which prove that e-commerce is green or e-commerce is environmentally friendly or digital communications actually can be used to uh, bring about benefits to the environment or to protect the environment right so uh, now when looking at this last point once again here it says companies can sometimes make cost savings while positioning themselves as environmentally concerned, right? Now, uh, certain organizations such as HSBC, for instance, there are companies which have hugely invested in this concept such as carbon trading, or they try to counteract the amount of carbon dioxide that is being emitted from their business activities and from their corporate uh, travels. They try to counteract the carbon dioxide emission, which is being caused by their business activities, right? By purchasing uh, carbon trading, right? By involving in carbon trading, you can read about these concepts. There are very interesting articles about carbon trading, which is been happening in the world for some time now. There are organizations trying to reduce their uh, carbon footprint. Their countries are trying to reduce their carbon footprint and to reduce the emission of carbon, carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Right? Now, for instance, HSBC, sometime earlier, they introduced digital banking, right? So when they introduced digital banking, what HSBC uh, did was, uh, they, for every transaction, for every digital statement that uh, a consumer gets on their account transactions, they planted a virtual tree in a virtual forest, right? They had a concept called virtual forest. So for every billing transaction which happens online for a consumer, they planted a virtual tree in this virtual forest. And for every 20 virtual trees that were planted, they pledged to plant an actual tree in the natural environment. For every 20 virtual plants that uh, they uh, put up in this virtual environment, they actually planted a real tree somewhere uh, on the land, right? So likewise, these kinds of interesting concepts are being followed by organizations with the motive of um, being environmentally concerned, right? And also they try to encourage consumers also to follow these kinds of green concepts and environmentally concerned concepts. So you also can uh, think of uh, other organizations which are following these kinds of uh, green practices. Any, any examples that you can think of where organizations are trying to be environmentally friendly or they are following uh, sustainable environmental practices? Yes? Anyone who can share such uh, organizations? So uh, if you can think of any, you can share them uh, on the chat or, the, or you can uh, speak them up, right? Companies which you think are uh, trying to be environmentally concerned, right? So that we can share them with the class as well, right? Um, right, so... Uh, So one person says, Kiel supermarket. So why do you say that Kiel supermarket is uh, environmentally concerned? So what sort of initiatives have they taken uh, to be environmentally concerned? Anything you can think of? Why do you say that it's uh, following green uh, practices? Yes. 
Right, so uh, now sometimes people, yes, I think we have an answer. Um, right, so now uh, just because a company is promoting a green theme, it doesn't mean that they are environmentally concerned. Right? Just because they are putting up a green signboard, it doesn't mean that they are environmentally concerned. Right? We say that uh, now certain initiatives, for example, such as where I think at some point Kiehl's introduced a system uh, where they were opening new outlets. Right? They gave a uh, invitation card where certain seeds were embedded in this invitation card. And the invitation card was made up uh, with pulp, right? And seeds were embedded. And uh, this invitation card can be planted by the person who's receiving it so that it can grow later on, right? So th those kinds of initiatives they have uh, followed. Uh, other than that, are there any answers? Yes. So, uh, in some parts of the world, yes, uh, we have an answer that McDonald's have 100% recyclable packaging. Yes, so this concept of recyclable packaging, once again, is a new emerging concept where organizations are trying to go green, right? And also polythene which uh, dissolves uh, in water, when they put in water, right? These new concepts uh, have been uh, discussed over and over again in the recent past as well. In Sri Lanka also we have biodegradable bags, which uh, there are certain organizations which uh, sell products in biodegradable bags, right? or biodegradable polythene, or easily degradable polythene. Right? So these kinds of initiatives, organizations are trying to adopt from time to time in order to show that they are environmentally concerned. So sometimes it's not the actual case. They are trying to show that they are environmentally concerned, but uh, they have different agendas. But uh, at this point, we are concerned about uh, how uh, these uh, green practices can be used by organizations to make cost savings. Right? Uh, so moving on. Now we are going to see why, six reasons why it is believed that e-commerce is green. Right? So why do we say that e-commerce is green? One thing is lower emission of carbon dioxide. What does it say? Uh, when a customer decides to buy online, it leads to less usage of vehicles for shopping, resulting less emission of carbon dioxide. So that is true, right? So when a customer decides to uh, shop online, then they don't have to take a vehicle and visit the shop physically, right? Rather, they can just uh, stay at home and by the convenience of one click or on their fingertips itself, they have the convenience of ordering something and having it delivered to their doorstep. So this delivery part still will have some uh, emission of carbon dioxide involved, but still, uh, the time that they are wasting on the road trying to search for certain shops right uh, in the entire shopping process can be reduced so that the total amount of carbon dioxide that is being emitted to the environment can be reduced right? so one that is one reason why we believe that e-commerce is great the second one lower inventory requirements so uh, what does this point say? The trend towards pre-selling online. What do we mean by pre-selling online? That means taking orders for products before they are built as implemented by them. Now we sometimes have concept as pre-ordering, right? Some uh, pre-ordering where you can order the product you want and uh, the company will manufacture only what you order. We also name this concept as make to order. Right? So organizations sometimes follow the make to order concept so that when they follow this concept, they don't have to keep excess inventory. Right? They only produce what is being demanded by consumers. For example, when I uh, order a laptop from Dell, I have the ability to say that these are the specifications I'm looking for. This is the model that I'm looking for. Can you please make this uh, custom made laptop for me? then they will manufacture what I order from them, right? So when they follow this method, it avoids the production of, uh, you know, excessive inventory, right? Because they know for sure 
the quantity which is being demanded so there is no over production no over production means there is no obsolete goods so there is no excessive inventory which the customers want buy right now if we read the rest of the sentence avoids the production of obsolete goods that have to be disposed of if they don't sell that means if certain products are not sold right if there's no enough demand for these products then they will have to be disposed so we i mentioned earlier also the disposal of technological uh, goods or this technological equipment is a widely held environmental concern right why because uh, these technological equipments they contain harmful uh, chemicals which can harm the composition of the soil right so uh, further to that also when you dispose of these is associated with wastage in energy and natural resources so the natural resources which we have used to manufacture these goods once again are wasted when you just throw away these products without selling them or when they destroy these products if they are not sold you will have to destroy them right so when you destroy these products then the natural resources which you have used to manufacture these products are unnecessarily wasted and also the energy which is being consumed in the production process is in vain right it goes in vain so that is uh, one reason why we say that uh, e-commerce is great right because it encourages lower inventory requirements right uh, then the other one so uh, why are organizations able to have lower inventory requirements because by using these digital technologies they can easily communicate with the consumer they can easily get an idea about consumers demand patterns their requirements right then they can make to order so this uh, make to order concept is being introduced because of the uh, evo evo evolution of digital communications and technology right it encourages make to order concept right and also we have talked about this uh, jit concepts earlier also there also we have highlighted how organizations uh, can benefit through these concepts okay. then uh, the third reason why we believe e-commerce is great third reason is fewer printed materials so uh, what do you mean by fewer printed materials how can fewer printed materials benefit the environment so how are these paper uh, printed what is the material that you use in order to manufacture paper mainly you use trees right you cut down trees in order to manufacture paper so if you are able to print uh, print a fewer quantity than you used that means you are saving paper you are saving paper means you are saving trees on the other hand right so online e newsletters and brochures replace their physical equivalent so saving paper and distribution cost so in the current context there are so many online e newsletters and brochures right these uh, leaflets uh, concept is it's trying to be discouraged right also in sri lanka of course we uh, still see this concept where brochures are being circulated still but still these e newsletters e brochures are being circulated right through email communications through social media and also online newspapers are available so all these things put in together help to reduce the printing of paper right so they replace the physical equivalent right the physical papers physical brochures are being replaced by online e newsletters and e brochures so that they save the paper and also distribution cost so we also mentioned that by following these kinds of green methods companies can be benefited in the earlier slide right so here we say that uh, through these kinds of fewer printed material the distribution cost that organizations have to incur right distribution of letters right distribution of these brochures to consumers to potential consumers to business partners these e newsletters and everything so this distribution cost can be saved so on the other hand on one hand they are saving the environment and on the other hand they are also uh, incidentally causing a huge cost saving for the organization in as well right 
So the fourth reason why we say that e-commerce is green. Less packaging. What does it say? Although many items sold online come in packaging to help convince us we have bought the right thing. That means when we buy something online, they usually come in attractive packaging, right? Which, which helps us to convince that uh, this is the right quality product which we have bought, right? To, uh, to, as a marketing message also, sometimes these attractive packaging are used, right? But although this is the case, there are also certain products which does not require a packaging, right? The next part of the sentence says, at least those billions of music tracks downloaded from iTunes and Napster don't require any packaging or plastic. Now, earlier in the days, how, do we, how did we use to listen to music? Now, uh, either now in the earlier days, we had the cassette pieces, right? Sometimes you may have seen them, which are used to come in certain plastic uh, packaging. And also, sometimes even when we online order these CDs, right? Uh, music embedded CDs, they still come in a packaging, plastic cover as well as a polythene cover on top of that. So although we online order sometimes, although we order online, sometimes these products are delivered to us in a packaging. Still, this packaging is harmful to the environment. Right? However, now in the modern world, we no longer purchase these kinds of CDs and DVDs online. Right? We don't order them online. What do we do? Rather, we just online stream the content or else we downline, download this content. If you want to listen to music, maybe in mp3 format we can easily download that so that no packaging is required so once again less packaging means less uh, plastic and polythene which is being uh, disposed to the environment right? and the fifth reason less waste across the whole supply chain of procurement manufacturing and distribution the internet can help reduce product and distribution cycles. Now, what do you mean by product and distribution cycles is uh, the time taken or this uh, process of transforming this uh, inventory by uh, organizations to finished goods, right? So this entire time taken uh, to transform from raw material or from inventory stage to a finished goods stage, this entire process, we call it as a production cycle right so along the supply chain of procurement manufacturing and distribution this point says that the internet can help to reduce these production and distribution cycles so from the point of the organization until a finished good is delivered to the consumer there are so many intermediary stages in this distribution cycles and in this production cycles right there are so many steps involved in the cycle but by using this internet it says that we can reduce these cycles that means we can reduce the intermediary steps or intermediary stages involved within this cycle or we can complete a cycle by using a lower amount of steps now in earlier uh, lessons also we talked about this uh, concept such as disintermediation right where certain intermediaries is being cut out right so also like that in these production cycles we are able to produce certain intermediary stages in production with uh, the use of technology so when the number of intermediary steps are being reduced then the wastage that happens at each of these stages of the production cycle can be reduced, right? Because at each of these stage, some part of wastage is happening, right? Sometimes you will have to throw away this waste, right? Uh, for example, uh, when we are reprocessing the good, repackaging, right? Maybe uh, at these stages, there will be damages happening. There will be unnecessary wastage happening. And also there might be unnecessary resource waste stage happening as well, right? So uh, this can be avoided by using this uh, improved supply chain and uh, integrated procurement uh, services which are incidental with the use of uh, internet, right? So we will be talking about these concepts of e-procurement and so on 
uh, in detail in the coming lessons as well. Uh, so, internet can greatly help to reduce these intermediary stages of production and distribution cycles. Right? Also, the next point says some even claim that auction services like eBay and Amazon Marketplace, which enable redistribution of second hand items, can promote reuse. Now, sometimes we know that these reusable items are being, there's a trend where reused items are being sold online, right? Now, in eBay and Amazon also, they have these types of uh, redistribution of second-hand items. In Sri Lanka also, uh, I saw some time earlier that uh, certain, certain business startups, they are trying to sell these second-hand items, right? Uh, online ordering of second-hand items is encouraged. Right? Uh, so, such as uh, sometimes even saris, sometimes books, right? These kinds of second hand items are being sold online, right? So, when these kinds of second hand items are promoted, what happens? Once again, the resource wastage can be reduced, right? The resources that you waste to produce a new product can be, uh, that, that uh, resource wastage can be saved or it can be minimized right? so uh, therefore less waste is happening because of these uh, e-commerce practices in the current context so here we discussed about two different concepts how less waste happens because of the internet right? uh, then dematerialization so this concept of dematerialization is also known as digitization what happens in digitization? This is the availability of products like software, music, and video in digital form, right? So once again, like I mentioned earlier, if you want to watch a film, if you want to listen to music, right? If you want to watch a video, you just stream it online. They are available as digital goods in the present context, right? So when we consume digital goods, the manufacturing cost, one thing, for organizations and that can be reduced, which we talked about that earlier, where organizations can reduce cost by following green practices or environmentally friendly practices. Also, on the other hand, when you use these kinds of digital products, digital services, uh, the resource wastage is being greatly minimized, greatly reduced, right? And also, you don't waste uh, unnecessarily material when you use these kinds of uh, products and services in an online platform, right? So here we have discussed about six different reasons why we believe that e-commerce is great. So I hope you are clear on the points which we have talked about. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Any questions uh, from what we have discussed so far? Is everything clear? So I think the silence means that everything is clear, right? So if there are any questions, please uh, feel free to raise them. Right? So now we are going to move on to a new area under social and legal factors. So uh, you all know we are in the process of discussing the slip factors, right? So from the slip factors, we are first focusing on social and legal factors. So under social and legal factors, now we have covered certain subtopics. Now we are moving on to taxation. How to change tax laws to reflect globalization through the internet is a problem that many governments have grappled with. So how are we going to change our tax laws to suit the globalization which is happening because of the internet? has become a problem for many governments, right? It's, it's, a, it's a concern which they have been struggling with for a long time, right? How are we uh, going to incorporate the effect of this uh, globalization through our tax laws? How are we going to adjust these tax laws to suit different scenarios when it comes to internet platforms? When you're buying something over the internet, how do you account to that revenue? Right? So likewise, there are certain problems that governments face. 
the fear is that the internet may cause significant reductions in tax revenues to national or local governments if existing laws do not cover changes in purchasing patterns. Now the problem here is if the existing tax, tax laws of the countries, if they do not cover the differences in purchasing patterns of the consumers, then there is a problem. Why? Because the revenue will not be accounted for accurately, right? A part of the tax revenue that the government can earn can be uh, removed if these tax laws do not detect or if they do not cover these different purchasing patterns. Because in the current context, we know this purchasing happens in multiple platforms. They can happen over social media, they can happen over the personal e-commerce site of the uh, vendor, they can happen over a third party site, right? So likewise, at which point is this revenue generated? And to whom should the revenue be accounted? From whom should these uh, tax be charged, right? If the tax laws do not detect, if they do not identify these different uh, purchasing patterns and online behavior of the consumers, then they are not able to uh, then they're not able to, uh, you know, uh, reap the maximum benefits of their tax laws. Or if there will, they, or there will be a, a significant reduction of the tax income that the government uh, should receive if they do not identify or detect these kinds of different purchasing patterns of consumers. Certain purchasing, for example, will might go completely unnoticed of the current tax law if these tax laws do not cover all those different purchasing patterns and different online buying behavior that consumers show. So that is why we say that uh, this uh, changing of tax laws to reflect globalization or to reflect different purchasing patterns has become a challenging concern for many governments. Right? Uh, so I hope that is clear to everyone. If there are any questions, please uh, feel free to ask. Right? Right, so now we are going to move on to the uh, next factor. Now we have talked about social and legal factors. Now we are going to talk about economic and competitive factors. The next in our clip category. Right? Um, so the economic health and the competitive environment in different countries will determine the e-commerce potential of each. That is true, right? Now, the, the nature of the economy in different countries is different, right? The purchasing power is different, the growth rates are different, uh, so the economic health is different, right? The, the GDP, uh, the, the compositions are different, right? So there are differences in the economic health as well as competitive environment will also determine the uh, e-commerce potential. That means certain countries are highly competitive when it comes to e-commerce environments. Right? Many developed countries, if we take uh, developed companies, countries where internet penetration is very high. Now in the first uh, chapter we talked about, we, we showed you through graphs how companies such as China are topping the list uh, which shows uh, the highest uh, amount of uh, e-commerce transactions Right over recent past, so these kinds of in these kinds of countries, the competition for e-commerce services are very high. Or internet-based businesses, uh, digital communications, the competition that you see for these kinds of businesses are very high. When compared with companies like uh, developing companies, uh, sorry, developing countries, right? When compared with developing countries, so when you are trying to establish a business in a highly competitive environment then there are more concerns which you have to be uh, paying attention to, right? Uh, it will be rather difficult to establish yourself as a, a new online brand or when you're trying to shift your traditional business to an online business or if you're trying to expand your online business further. When you're trying to do these kinds of things, right? Your potential, your e-commerce potential will be determined by the economic conditions of that country as well as the competitive nature of that environment in which you are uh, going to be taking part in, right? 
so managers in developing e-commerce managers developing e-commerce strategies in multinational companies will initially target the countries that are most developed in the use of the technology so usually when multinational companies who operate over different countries worldwide right who have a global operation they usually tend to give the first priority or the first focus to countries who show a greater penetration of internet or greater uh, having a greater development in terms of technology then they try to establish their e-commerce uh, ventures right if they are trying to for example put up a new e-commerce based uh, service line a new e-commerce based business in a certain country they will try to give priority those, to those countries who show better development in technology rather than a country which has a very low level of technological development right so knowledge of different economic conditions is also part of budgeting for revenue from different countries uh, so that is also very important like i mentioned earlier the knowledge of different economic conditions is also a very important factor that organizations should consider when they try to budget for the revenues that they are expecting from different countries in which they are going to establish their business why because some countries they have a lower per capita income than another country right the purchasing power the purchasing parity will be different the economic growth rate will be different and also the penetration level of this technology towards different regions will be different uh, therefore the development will be different so likewise these economic conditions have to be considered when you are budgeting for the revenue from different countries right uh, and also not only uh, these kinds of factors also differing tax laws might also affect your revenue from different countries right different tax regulations which are incidental this is actually uh, accounting to the earlier category which we talked of under the slip factors we talked about taxation right so also these uh, tax laws which define different countries will also affect the amount of revenue that you generate from different countries and also economic conditions need to be paid attention to because uh, depending on these growth rates depending on the purchasing power of the consumers for example the amount of revenue that you gain from different countries or different regions will be different right then the next point says the trend towards globalization can arguably insulate a company to some extent from fluctuations in regional markets that means uh now this globalization trend can uh provide a protection to the company up to a certain extent on certain fluctuations or that means uh, you know ups and downs or deviations which happen in regional markets for example in the asian region you may experience that the purchasing power of the consumers is rather low when compared with the uh let's say european region right or uh, let's say in the southeast asia the amount of uh, purchasing parity or the, the purchasing power of the consumers would be lower but this impact can be actually you can be protected by this impact when you are participating in a global market why because you can spread out to countries who have better economic conditions better purchasing powers consumers who have better uh you know purchasing ability when it comes to buying over the internet so these kinds of regional barriers that you have or this uh, disadvantages you have in regional economies can be overcome by participating in a global market however also what happens but is of course no protection from global recession so although you are able to overcome certain disadvantages which may be incidental in regional markets fact certain things such as global recessions or global global business downfalls you might not be able to protect yourself from so there are ups and downs and positives and negatives equally right so next point managers can also study e-commerce in these leading countries to help predict future e-commerce trends in their own country that means 
Now the managers have the ability of studying e-commerce uh, in these leading countries, which we talked about earlier. There are certain countries who have a very high level of internet penetration in uh, their uh, countries. Right now, for example, if you take uh, Singapore, if you take Malaysia, the level of penetration is very higher when compared to Sri Lanka. Right? The level of access to technology is uh, very high. Access to technology by uh, citizens is higher than compared to Sri Lanka. Right? So also when you consider companies like countries like China, right, they are leading the e-commerce sector. So these countries, by studying the evolution of these kinds of countries, right, managers can get an idea about the possible e-commerce trends that will happen in our own country. For example, Sri Lanka can study the evolution of e-commerce in China or maybe in, Sri in Singapore when we try to predict the, our trajectory or when we try to predict our path in e-commerce. Right? What sort of evolutions will the e-commerce in Sri Lanka undergo? Right? We can take examples and lessons from these kinds of developing countries, these kinds of developed countries and these kinds of leading countries. Right? So that is what this point tries to explain. So any questions so far or any doubts? No doubts.